Now, let's turn your attention. Oh, I just moved into a wall to the train. Now, this is height field trains, and they're driven by Copernicus, which is really ingenious of side effects to use it for height fields. Let's go to this height field. We first begin with a normal height field, so you need a base to work with. Then I add in my Copernicus layer of noise. So this is the Copernicus layer that I made. We can actually just use this right off the bat, but I have it added into the layer just because this height field is has everything properly set up. Copernicus is this is where the magic really happens. So here I have a soft import, which is just the grid is not being used, which is just the height field with a teeny bit of noise. You can see there's a bit of bumps piped out, convert it to geo to layer. So we need it into a com composition that we can actually use. It's it's not cop net material. This will change it into something that we can actually manipulate in Copernicus. Now here you can see I have a simple shape, but I have this hooked up to this guy. Now, why is that? It's this size reference here. Because the height field is humongous, if you don't have this side reference, you're going to be dealing with this, this negative one and one parameter, which in when translated into SOPs, it's just a two by two square. That's not going to even show up on the height field. The height field is huge. So let's take a look how huge. Well, over here, it's 500, negative 500. It's very faint. It's on the grid line right there. But if we go to the information, it will say the resolution right there, 500 by 500. So this thing is huge. And in order to get our Copernicus operations at the same scale, you can just plug it into that reference, that size reference. And this shape will be in the same scale size in SOPs. So you can see in SOPs, we are still at the, this says 625 here. So this is 500. This is the, here, it says negative 500 right here. So I know it's very faint. It's right here. It's on the grid line. Here's 500. Now to show it to you, I'm going to blend it right on there. So you should see a big circle here. Blend this and let's blend the black and white because we can't do much with the SDF. Let's add. So there's a circle there. Now let's see what, it, it's very, the height is not, much because look at what we're adding let's go to the model this has a size of one so it's just adding one unit to the height field it's not much what you can do if you want a lot more can remap it remap the model and let's look at it live okay that's gonna take forever uh, let's go to hundreds there you go okay let's go to tens because I'm modifying more of it. You can go down and up. It's just the scale of the hype field. It's so enormous in comparison to Copernicus itself. So you have to make sure it's in the right size. Now, without this, let me disconnect this. I don't think it'll even work. Just because the image sizes are so different. This reference is very handy. So dilate it just to give it a bit of fall off. So this is still the one, the one value but we're not blending it onto the height field yet. So we're gonna save that to the last, right before the blend, because all the Copernicus operations are based on zero to one values. It'll start clipping in negative. You're just gonna see black. So here I'm just blending. These are just random things. The cloud noise blended in to, to create some variation. Remap, erode, making it uh, here's the constant. So right before I blend it in, I'm using the stamp. I had a lot of trouble pasting this onto my height field terrain. So I used the stamp point to help me with that. And really, all it, it, it's only stamping it once, though. If I could have got the blend to work, I would have just blended it on there. Copernicus noise texture onto the height map, onto the height field. So that's why I needed this. That was the only reason I used it. It's only making one copy of it. And then I blend it in with the simple noise height field that I started off with. And piping it out, I'm taking this height field. Now it is powered by this flow that's actually being used as a mask. So it is being animated. So that's where the animation comes from. It's driving an animated height map. So this comes back out and slapped onto a flat height field and converted into geometry. 
So this really slows it down. This node really slows it down a lot. Even this was a lot faster because this is still in volumes. Once you get into the height field, it's actually calculating all the points. And this guy is heavy. This guy has 250,000 points. It's not too heavy, but it's running live. It's running a, a live deformation.